2022 meeting of the land use committee will come to order it is 2 p.m i'm dan strauss chair of the committee will the clerk please call the roll uh, council member nelson present council member peterson council member peterson Oh, present, present. Chair Strauss. Yes, present. We have three present. Thank you. Um, we have three present and we have quorum. We have one item on the agenda today, a public hearing on the comprehensive plan docketing for 2023. Before we begin, if there's no objection, the agenda will be adopted. Hearing no objection, the agenda is adopted. Because we only have one item on today's agenda and because uh, items must relate to, or public comment must relate to an item on the agenda, we are going to just have our public hearing today. So our first item is the public hearing on docketing for 2023 comprehensive plan amendments. Every year, the council solicits amendments from the public for consideration for the following year. The council drafts and considers a resolution which adopts a docket of amendments for consideration. Decision making on that docket is informed by the public hearing, which we are holding today. Uh, Anthony, could you please read the abbreviated title for the first agenda item into the record? Comprehensive plan docketing uh, for briefing and public hearing. Thank you. And Vanessa, if you want to join us at the committee table, you're more than welcome. We're joined by Wish Whitson of Council Central Staff, Vanessa Murdoch, Rick Moeller, and Jamie Strobel from the Planning Commission, and Jim Holmes and Nick Welsh from the Office of Planning and Community Development. Uh, Wish, would you like to kick us off with the presentation for today? Thank you. Yes. Let me get the presentation going. All right. As, as mentioned, uh, we're talking about the annual comprehensive plan amendment process for the 2022-2023 cycle. Um, as you know, the comprehensive plan is a 20-year plan for growth. It has a fundamental role in the city's land use, transportation, housing, and capital planning. And all city decisions are required to be consistent with the comprehensive plan. Oh, um, as you heard at your last meeting, OPCD is currently working on a major update to the plan, which may result in fundamental changes in how the city plans for growth. In between and major updates, such as the one currently um, underway, the council has a process for considering smaller changes to the plan, which we call the docketing process. Uh, resolution 31807 lays out this process and criteria for docketing amendments. Um, during the spring, a call was put out for amendment proposals. Um, those amendment proposals are reviewed by the Seattle Planning Commission, the Office of Planning and Community Development, OPCD, and Council Central staff based on criteria that are contained in Resolution 31807. Uh, the Council considers those uh, proposals and the recommendations and develops a docket of amendments that are then uh, transmitted to OPCD for further analysis and review, including environmental review as appropriate. Uh, finally, the mayor makes a recommendation on uh, specific amendments to be uh, considered for the comprehensive plan, and the council holds another public hearing and uh, considers the final uh, amendment proposals. Um, the criteria the council has adopted are intended to help consider whether um, an amendment is ripe for additional analysis over the course of a year-long uh, review and analysis process. They're not intended to uh, be the point where a council um, determines whether or not they agree with the amendment proposal, but are instead intended to look at, is, is the amendment appropriate for the comprehensive plan? Is it legal? Um, is the comprehensive plan the best venue for considering the amendment um, is it practical, practicable to consider the amendment? Is there sufficient time and resources to um, undertake the analysis required? Um, and if the amendment has been proposed before, have there been changes um, that warrant reconsidering um, the amendment? Um, for 
some specific amendments, uh, types of amendments. We look at changes to neighborhood plans if there is demonstrated community support for the amendment uh, from that affected community. Uh, we look and try and uh, ensure the amendments that are being studied will make a material difference in city decision making. And finally, for changes to the future land use map or flume, um, we look at amendment we have a size threshold um, and we only docket amendments that are for a city block or larger. Uh, we received five amendments uh, this spring, uh, proposals from council members Morales and uh, members of the public. Um, the first amendment is from council member Morales it would define essential daily needs in the plan and would amend land use policies to allow uses meeting daily needs in residential areas that are more than a quarter mile from services. Uh, the recommendation from central staff, OPCD, and the Planning Commission is to incorporate this analysis into the major update, which is looking at new land use and growth strategy policies. The second amendment um, is related to equitable urban forests. It would um, it recommends maximizing retention of existing significant and exceptional trees with a goal of no net loss of tree canopy and a goal of increased canopy in underserved areas. Um, as the committee is aware, legislation to support tree retention has been drafted and is currently in front of the hearing examiner. In addition, the climate change resolution the council just adopted stated that as part of the major update, the plan will be updated to enhance the tree canopy, particularly in residential areas with low canopy coverage. Uh, so the recommendation is to consider this in the context of the major update um, and the code amendments that are currently pending. The third amendment is a future land use map amendment. It is one parcel at the northeast northwest corner of South Holly Street and 49th Avenue South. Um, the proposal is to amend the future land use map from neighborhood residential to multifamily. Um, because it is just one parcel, it doesn't meet the one block threshold. Um, and uh, the recommendation is for the uh, proposers uh, to uh, move forward with the rezone without waiting for a comprehensive plan amendment. Amendment four, is related to urban freight delivery. Um, it recommends amending the transportation element to address transportation network companies and delivery trucks. Um, the recommendation on this is to consider these issues as part of the development of the transportation master plan or the CL transportation plan. Um, the last amendment uh, that was proposed this year is for a series of changes to the future land use map in Inner Bay and East Magnolia. There are four maps included in this proposal. The first would change areas in Northeast Magnolia from neighborhood residential to multifamily. The second would change areas in East Magnolia from neighborhood residential to multifamily related to the future Dravis Light Rail Station area. The third would change areas along Elliott Avenue from industrial to multifamily or commercial. And the fourth would change areas further south on Elliott from industrial to multifamily or commercial. Industrial areas citywide are currently under review as part of the maritime industrial study. Changes to industrial areas are more appropriately considered as part of that work. And areas around future stations along the West Seattle Ballard Light Rail Extension will be studied as part of the stationary planning process. And this amendment is most appropriately considered in the context of that work. There are a few other items that have previously been docked, docketed um, and have not yet come back to council. Um, for Florentia Street, which was docketed last year, SDOT has told council member Lewis, who is the sponsor of this amendment, that they will look at it as part of the Seattle transportation plan. Uh, the council anticipates receiving recommendations from OPC OPCD on maritime and industrial policies and neighborhood connections across highways in the next few months. And uh, we recommend considering the rest in the major update, um, which has been the plan um, for these items. Uh, before I hand it over to OPCD and the Planning Commission, do council members have any questions at this stage? Thank you, Wish. Uh, that was very helpful. I don't have any questions currently. Uh, Councilmember Nelson seeing none. Councilmember Peterson seeing none. 
um, yeah, if you want to turn it over to Vanessa, Rick, uh, or Jim, or Nick, uh, whoever wants to go next, please take it away. Let's go with Jim, um, who ha also has a short presentation. Thanks, Lish. Um, yeah, let me share my screen. Hold a second. Okay, um, yeah, so we largely concur with uh, central staff's analysis. Um, there were five proposals submitted. Um, we are recommending, OPCD recommends none of these for docketing based on the criteria of council Reso resolution 31807. Um, this recommendation is based strictly on application of the criteria, not on the policy merits of any of the proposals. Um, and we are, uh, we'll point out that three amendments will be considered as part of the comprehensive major update of the comprehensive plan in 2024. <clears throat> so the equitable urban forest canopy, we are recommending against stocketing this item because it's substantially similar to proposals considered in previous years and not docketed or adopted, but it will inform development of tree canopy policies as part of the major update of the comprehensive plan. Urban freight delivery, we are also recommending this not be adopted because it's substantially similar to a proposal uh, previously submitted and not docketed or adopted. Um, but this, and it is also being addressed through the major update to the comprehensive plan. South Holly Street future land use map amendment, uh, we recommend against docketing this proposal because it will not meet, the, it does not meet the minimum size requirement of one block. Um, and the reason criteria would allow a rezone of this parcel without a change to the future land use map. Uh, Inner Bay and East Magnolia future land use map amendment. Uh, we are recommending against stocking this amendment because um, it should better be addressed through a station area planning efforts that will occur once a record of decision is issued by the sound by sound transit that confirms station locations in the Inner Bay corridor. And the essential daily needs, um, we are recommending against stocking this proposal because it is better addressed in the major update of the comprehensive plan and it will inform that work going forward. And finally, industrial and maritime strategy policies. As the committee knows, we've been working on the industrial maritime strategy for the last several years. We are nearing completion of a final environmental impact statement that analyzes a number of industrial land use policies to implement the strategy. And we are recommending that that be adopted or docketed for consideration in 2023. And that's the conclusion of our recommendations. Thank you, Jim. I'll pass over to Vanessa, who's here in person, and Rick. And I'm missing, I dropped my script, but I thought, Rick, you had maybe somebody struggle with you as well. Um, Jamie. I'm not seeing them on our screen though. Any? Yeah, take it away, Vanessa. All you. Oh, uh, Anthony, if you could turn on the. I defer to um, co-chair Rick Moeller. Oh, your mic's on. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, the Planning Commission recommendations uh, are uh, concur with that of uh, OPCD and Council Central staff. Um, I would just note that uh, the planning commission is, there is strong support among planning commissioners for the uh, essential daily needs proposed amendment. And uh, we concur with OPCD and central staff that that would be best addressed through the major update to the comprehensive plan. And as you will see in um, upcoming scoping comments on the major update to the comprehensive plan, the planning commission will specifically call out this amendment. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Rick Moeller, co-chair of the Planning Commission, to see if he has anything to add. And I will just note that uh, the other co-chair, Jamie Strowell, had a scheduling conflict and was unable to join us today. Not a problem. Um, I don't have much to add other than to say that we 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 applaud um, the council members' um, centering of this issue. 
we do think it needs to be treated in a very holistic and integrated way with the comprehensive plan major update, especially looking at both the land use and transportation elements of the plan. Thanks. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Vanessa, Jim, and Rish. Uh, this seems to be the calm before the vast amount of work next year. I'm just going to also state uh, my incredible support for the industrial maritime work, the essential daily needs amendment, the equitable urban forest amendment, and the urban freight <laughs> delivery amendment. These are things that are very important to me um, and that I will be tracking through the major update to the comprehensive plan. I'll be tracking them very closely. Uh, it, Please do not take our uh, these recommendations not to dock it as a signal about support. It is because we are the year out, one year before the major update to the comprehensive plan. We're just going to be taking up the majority of this work next year. Colleagues, any other questions or comments? Otherwise, I will start with the public hearing here. Uh, Anthony is bringing me... The list we're going to do in person before online and let me pull up my script to make sure everything is correct um just one last check any further questions comments concerns before we open up the public hearing no seeing none i will moderate the public hearing in the following manner each speaker will be given two minutes to speak anthony you want to play the recording and then we'll take it from there City, the flowers in the city of Goodwill, built on indigenous land, the traditional territory of the Coast Salish peoples. The Seattle City Council welcomes remote public comment and is eager to hear from residents of our city. If you would like to be a speaker and provide a verbal public comment, you may register two hours prior to the meeting via the Seattle City Council website. Here's some information about the public comment proceedings. Speakers are called upon in the order in which they registered on the council's website. Each speaker must call in from the phone number provided when they registered online and use the meeting ID and passcode that was emailed upon confirmation. If you did not receive an email confirmation, please check your spam or junk mail folders. A reminder. The speaker meeting ID is different from the general listen line meeting ID provided on the agenda. Once a speaker's name is called, the speaker's microphone will be unmuted and an automatic prompt will say, the host would like you to unmute your microphone. That is your cue that it's your turn to speak. At that time, you must press star six. You will then hear a prompt of, you are unmuted. Be sure your phone is unmuted on your end so that you will be heard. As a speaker, you should begin by stating your name and the item that you are addressing. A chime will sound when 10 seconds are left in your allotted time. As a gentle reminder to wrap up your public comments. At the end of the allotted time, your microphone will be muted and the next speaker registered will be called. Once speakers have completed providing public comment, Please disconnect from the public comment line and join us by following the meeting via Seattle Channel broadcast or through the listening line option listed on the agenda. The council reserves the right to eliminate public comment if the system is being abused or if the process impedes the council's ability to conduct its business on behalf of residents of the city. Any offensive language that is disruptive to these proceedings or that is not focused on an appropriate topic as specified in council rules may lead to the speaker being muted by the presiding officer. Our hope is to provide an opportunity for productive discussions that will assist our orderly consideration of issues before the council. The public comment period is now open and we will begin with the first speaker on the list. Please remember, to press star six after you hear the prompt of, you have been unmuted. Thank you, Seattle. And then followed by those online, Steve Zemke, you're the only one not present. So 
uh, now's the time to call in Steve. Uh, here in, in Chambers, we have Megan Visage Glock, uh, followed by Steve Rubustello. So, Megan, uh, join us at any of the microphones. We've got the two minute timer, and Anthony, once she starts talking, you can. Uh, is it on? There you Hello? go. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, hi Megan. My name is Megan Bassage Glock and I'm here to speak in the comprehensive plan amendment public hearing. My husband Michael is signing on remotely from his job site as is our representative Jessica Rowe. We're the owners and residents of the property at 4822 South Holly Street and the applicants for amendment three on the agenda. We're longtime Seattle residents and we love our South Seattle neighborhood and neighbors. We've enjoyed seeing the neighborhood grow and recognize that Seattle needs to accommodate the unprecedented growth in all of its neighborhoods. Our property is a 7,200 square foot lot located one block from the intersection of Rainier Avenue South. It's currently zoned neighborhood residential three and improved by a 960 square foot, 110 year old single family home. We applied for this amendment because we see an opportunity for additional homes on our property. The rest of the properties on our block have been platted for townhomes and are zoned LR3M. Our proposed amendment is a logical extension of the adjacent zoning at a time when the city is looking for ways to add housing options and our neighbors are looking for houses. However, we are not developers and we don't have the resources to pursue a property specific rezone. The city's process for a site specific rezone is complicated and financially inaccessible. We've been advised it costs tens of thousands up into the $100,000 for a site specific rezone. However, this amendment is a simple positive policy choice for the city and meets all of the other docketing criteria. The city's docketing process adds equity to the planning process. This could be an opportunity for anyone with a good policy idea to propose amendments regardless of their access to resources. We would appreciate the opportunity to present this win-win amendment rather than being precluded simply due to the small size of our property and our working class finances. We will not pursue a site specific rezone as it is cost prohibitive for our family. Please consider docketing our amendment. If you decide not to docket our amendment, we ask that you consider the property in the city's periodic comprehensive plan update process. The zoning for multifamily and Rainer Avenue is very narrow. Our property is likely one of many along the corridor that present an opportunity to address the city's housing needs through the update process. Like, you know, we really feel like this would be really beneficial to add neighbors to our neighborhoods. And we thank council members for considering our amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Steve, welcome. Well, it's uh, been at least 20 years on the, for trying to find a tree ordinance that really works in the city of Seattle to save large trees. And this is another opportunity which can be missed by the council to actually do that. We've had a number of rules that trouble is they never really seem to work. Let's make some rules that really work. And some of the things that uh, seem to be clouding things up is the idea of not talking about the heritage or the legacy trees, but let's talk about coverage. So what you wanna do is put shrubs, something that doesn't do near the uh, shade. It doesn't do near the removed carbon from the atmosphere. It's just not the same. So this is an opportunity to move forward to try to save some of the trees that have been around in Seattle much longer than you have and even longer than I have. And I think that uh, it does make a difference. There are more and more people who are talking about the problems in the poorer areas of the city who don't have as many trees as you have in the richer areas of the city. And I think that we need to save them in all of the areas of the city. And on that one thing that uh, since my time is going quickly 
is that to think about is that our comprehensive plans seem to be based on years. How about looking at population or households, some way of taking a look at where the development's going to come. Let's start out with taking a look at what we have, how much are we already zoned for? You know, I never heard these things talked about at land use meetings at all. Let's take a look at what we can do that will make it acceptable and even possibly a little less uh, expensive for the taxpayers. Thank you, Steve. Always nice to see you. Uh, we are now moving into remote public comment. We have four folks signed up. We've got Steve Zemke, followed by Megan Cruz, Colleen McClear, and then Richard Ellison. Um, just making sure all of these are regarding the uh, docketing amendments to the comprehensive plan. Steve, welcome. How are you today? At your convenience, Steve, press, there you are. Welcome. Hello, uh, my name is Steve Zemke and I'm speaking for TreePAC. There is currently no citywide plan on how to reach equitable tree canopy across uh, the neighborhoods, let alone a plan on how to reach 30% tree canopy by 2037. Trees continue to be removed as we densify the city. It is great to include a strategy for neighborhood tree equity in recommendations for the 2035 One Seattle Comprehensive Plan, but that is three years away. Trees do not grow overnight. The time frame to grow trees gets shorter and shorter in reaching the 2037 goal of 30% tree canopy, for instance. Why not act now? Please consider the proposed amendment uh, to the comp plan now. We also need data to help us build uh, climate resiliency by protecting existing canopy and creating more life-saving canopy in those areas most affected by urban heat island impacts. What's planted today will be a 15-year-old tree in 2037. What's planted in 2025 will be a 12-year-old tree. Yet a 75-year-old Douglas fir, if it's not cut down, will be a 90-year-old tree in 2037, still providing lots of, of benefits to the city, including climate resiliency. An updated tree ordinance is discussed as, a, as the way to proceed uh, does need to move forward and needs to add permits for all six inch DBH trees removed and replaced by homeowners and developers to track tree loss over time to, compared to what is being planted and where it's being planted. SDOT is currently using the Acela database system to track street tree removal and planning. SDCI needs to do the same for trees removed during development and outside development. As Mayor Bruce Harrell has said, we need data to make better decisions. Please move forward on protecting as soon as you can and updating the tree protection ordinance and creating the goals and strategies in the One Seattle Plan to protect tree canopy and increase climate resiliency. For many people, it's now becoming a matter of life and death. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, up next is Megan Cruz, followed by Colleen McClear and then Richard Ellison. Megan, we see you here. Press star six. We'll take it away. There you are. Yes. Welcome. Yes, I'm here. Hi. Good afternoon. I'm Megan Cruz, and I'm speaking on the amendment to start counting delivery trucks and rideshare vehicles as mode shares in the transportation element of the comp plan. These modes behave differently from commuter traffic, which is what we're tracking now. That's the only thing. Trucks and TNCs circle city blocks making deliveries and picking up fares. Some estimates say these modes put triples of vehicle miles traveled, or VMT, on city streets compared to a single occupancy vehicle. This increased VMT leads to more emissions and more risk to pedestrians and cyclist safety. If we don't start counting these impacts, they will grow worse. The Consign Major Update rightfully seeks to create more walkable neighborhoods by spreading commercial goods and services across the city. This will also bring increased trucks and rideshare traffic. The SDC and central staff recommended this proposal be considered as part of the Seattle Transportation Plan, and I appreciate that support. However, it also must be part of the transportation element of the comp plan. Without a mandate to count these necessary but high VMT vehicles, we can't accurately plan for sustainable, walkable neighborhoods or design new buildings and apportion use of curb 
to create space for these modes and limit unnecessary cruising. It has budgetary consequences as well. As the city prepares a new move Seattle levy, if we don't count trucks and TNCs, how can we predict and plan for the wear and tear they put on right of ways and how to budget for repair and maintenance? Thanks to GPS tracking and traffic cordon studies, we now know a lot about the behavior of trucks and TNCs. It's time we use this data to design and maintain a safer, cleaner city over the next 20 years. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Up next is Colleen McClear followed by Richard Ellison. Colleen, I see you there. Just press stars. There we go. Welcome. Take it away. Uh, thank you, Chair Strauss. And um, again, Laurelhurst Community um, Club is uh, excited to um, comment on the um, docketing for the comp plan and the future comp plan. We also support amendments one, two, and four right away. Grocery stores, especially with fresh produce and protein and pharmacies are lifelines. Gosh, we've seen that during COVID. And the new philosophy of grocery stores to sell their land to developers for housing. And we need to retain those grocery stores. And so we need to study that and address that and fix it now. We've lost three stores, uh, one's coming up in Northeast Seattle already, and people need food. So that is something that I don't think can wait. Cultural anchors are also essential. Once they're gone, the entire character and history will be placed by shiny rectangles with no soul. And community centers should be activated as well to welcome all those new and diverse neighbors. We support uh, amendment number two, as others have spoken very eloquently about the exceptional and significant trees they need to be saved now to prevent the heat islands developing throughout the city with all of our new density. We support amendment number four, the urban freight, freight deliveries to be studied right now and provided for as, as our developments go on. They are a clog in traffic and it's a way to um, entice people not to use their cars. And finally, if you will allow um, to uh, quote a former council, uh, President Jim Street, and he emphasized that the best comp plans are the ones where everyone is heard. And so far, the outreach plan for the comp plan going forward is falling short. OPCD has included only a few small and targeted groups to participate, and none have been from the most highly populated areas north of the Ship Canal. And if this is going to change citywide planning, it's essential that they start right now for more outreach for homeowners and renters to work together and form collaborative solutions. It's not them against us. There's always been inclusive outreach for Seattle's residents, and they will be the most impacted. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen. Up next is Richard Ellison. Richard, welcome. I see you there, Richard. Just press star six and we'll take it away. Richard, we see you there. If you can hear me, press star six. Richard? Richard? Well, not a good time for a Bueller joke, but Richard? Anyone there? Maybe submit comment in writing. Yeah, Richard, if um, I'm going to drag my feet just a second longer, but hopefully you'll press star six here shortly. Um, Ian, is it possible to ping him at all or give him some sort of notice? Maybe give him a. Uh, yes. Uh what I would suggest to the user can hear is to just give it a couple of seconds between attempts so that your phone can read. I think we got him. Thank you, Ian. Richard, are you there? I see you're off mute. You might be on mute on your phone. There you are. Oh, you went back on mute, but we heard you there. There, you're off mute. Try speaking. Is your phone, is the mute button put on your phone, not the star six. Is... Well, you're off mute. Hello, can you hear me now? 
Yeah, well, there we go. Richard Ellison. Um, sorry about this technology problem. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. All right. Sorry about this. Uh, I've been trying to press star six for the last minute. <laughs> Not um, a problem. Hello, my name is Richard Ellison, and I'd like to uh, uh, address the comprehensive plan docketing 31807. Um, I urge support for an equitable urban forest amendment, which is critical as the urban forest requires extra focus and attention right now. As part, please update the tree protection ordinance now because we cannot wait and create new director's rules. As a first step, require maximizing the retention of existing significant and exceptional trees during permits of lot segregation, lot boundary adjustments, exterior renovations, and new construction. Regardless of whether it's neighborhood residential or multifamily, in building new housing, the city must come to grips with protecting its existing canopy and enhancing its canopy with new plantings. The council must include climate resiliency throughout the new comprehensive plan consistent with the green, new Green Deal ordinance. DCI representatives who have voiced that protecting trees is incompatible with new development is old thinking. And we need bold ecological thinking to survive climate change, peak storm events, and peak heat events, including increasing density and our goals of affordable housing. The council must educate developers and urbanists that trees must be incorporated in new development. Where are the kids gonna play? Where's the shade from sun and storm? Building tall around existing trees, incorporating more open space on the ground for new trees and shrubs. The developers want a predictable tree code and they will do as the council dictates. The issue of tree planting and tree protection in low canopy areas should be dealt with now and not three years down the road. The heat wave this week is but a taste of things to come. The entire nation and world is suffering heat related deaths, droughts and food insecurity. The quality of living in Seattle must be emphasized as it densifies in a climate changing world. Please establish a neighborhood to citywide policies to provide environmental benefits from the urban forest to underserved Seattle neighborhoods and communities. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Uh, that was the la our last speaker present to speak at this public hearing. The public hearing on the comprehensive plan docketing is now closed. Uh, thank you to everyone who provided comment today. This was the only item on our agenda today. Um, and this does conclude the Wednesday, July 27th, 2022 meeting of the Land Use Committee. Uh, colleagues, any further business? Anything good to the order? Seeing none, seeing none. Um, we will not be having an August 10th committee meeting and the next regularly scheduled meeting of the Land Use Committee is on September 14th, starting at 2 p.m. Thank you for attending. We are now adjourned.